All right, hello and welcome back to my Hotline Miami clone in Unity tutorial. All right, on today's one we're going to be doing, there's two camera effects that I'm going to show you how to do basically today, but I'm going to demonstrate them in Hotline Miami first. Uh, all right, so we've got the loading screen. I've just turned off the music just in case of any copyright stuff, but yeah. Basically, there's two things I wanted to do. You see how the camera like slightly rotates as you move? Yeah, that's one of the things. And the second one is how you can like look ahead, but it sort of limits you. So like you don't just fucking shoot off into the distance and it follows the cursor. That's basically what I'm gonna try and do. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna show, show you what I've done here. All right, mine's a little different because basically look, holding down shift and it's just sort of going, it goes, you can just look around, but there's a limit to it, so like, just as he gets off screen, it'll stop, more or less the same thing, and as I'm walking, you can see like the camera's rotating a little, like it'll rotate anti-clockwise for like five degrees, then clockwise for five, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, so kind of like a drunk effect actually, but never mind, okay, I will kick open Mono Develop now. Alright, the first one, because it didn't involve changing anything. Well, actually, it did, but whatever. No man. Okay, so I'm going to go on the basically the look ahead thing where you hold down shift. So, basically, it's got. Oh, oh moment now. I'll tell you what I changed on play movement first, because that involved a little change. Alright, so basically, the movement subroutine is only called when the moving value is true here. So. If moving is true, and I've made another one called check, which basically sets moving to true if the player is pressing WASD or <coughs> yeah, uh, but that's separate to the actual movement, so it's not reliant on the uh, this thing because it was getting stuck before. But never mind. So yeah, it checks separately to the actual movement, so it doesn't get stuck or whatever. And then this basically says, if the player is holding down shift, the left shift, it'll set it to false, so the camera doesn't follow it, and it'll stop the player moving just to, like, so they don't wander into an enemy or something. And then basically it grips the uh, screen. It, it uses you know how we use the uh, rotate cam world to screen point, well, screen to world point, sorry to. Uh, I think it was in the rotate cursor, yep, to get the position so we could rotate towards it. Uh, we're using a similar thing to get the mouse position. And then we set in the, so to create a new vector 3, so it also uses the minus 10, because if we look on the main camera, the Z axis is minus 10 there. So it'll just keep the camera the same. And basically the direction is, the camera, we get a direction, between from this to where the mouse is uh, and has minus 10 on the z-axis so the camera stays on the same axis while it moves and then it well if uh, then it'll get that's basically the direction it moves in sorry if i'm being a bit on edge but whatever uh yeah then basically it checks if the player's sprite render is visible so if it can be seen by the camera that one, the main one, then it'll tr move the camera in the direction of the mouse cursor, and then once the player is no longer visible, it'll stop. Which you saw here. It's so like shift, it stops, go down, stops, left, right, etc. All right, it stops. Now, the second one is the camera rotate effect, which is basically. It'll check if the player is moving, which it gets from, so if WASD are being pressed and it's not on the shift thing, then it'll, basically you can't, uh, from the way I've done it, it's like, it gets a new vector free to create the rotation. We can actually manually assign the rotation of an object using transform.euler angles, uh, which I find kind of useful. Uh, I think you can do it by quaternion.slurp, I believe it is. But 
Euler angles is easier to understand because it's literally just the x, y, and z rotation that you're setting or and or changing, which is probably easier for newcomers to Unity to understand. Uh, basically, what it does is it'll count down a timer while the player is moving, which is this value here, and once it reaches zero, it will add mod to the z value. The z value is the z rotation of the camera. And the mod, uh, it switches between minus 1, minus 0 0.1, sorry, and 0 0.1. So basically, it'll simulate anti-clockwise rotation and clockwise rotation of the camera. And then, it'll basically switches between the two values for mod when it's either more than, I think it's more than 5 degrees or, and less than 10. And, uh less than 355 and more than 350. So that's basically just, you need the second bit in just so the two don't like conflict because being, because 355 is more than, still technically more than five, so it just keep flicking between them infinitely. And I've not actually put in the, sorry, put one. oh well, it works fine. It doesn't actually need the timer, I forgot to put it in, oh well. well let's see what happens if you do put it in. Timer equals 0.1F. I should have checked this before, but oh well, let's see how it works. Do, 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 do. It doesn't really work, does it? It worked fine without it, actually, so. You don't really need it, actually. Uh, timer dot dot time. Let's just see. It should work fine. Yeah, it works fine without a timer. You don't even need the timer. Okay, so basically that was it. We've done... So to recap, we've got the movement, uh, like the camera rotation effects, which is sort of like kind of... I don't know. I thought it looked kind of cool, but it works. And does not need the timer, so that's always good. Slightly more efficient, which just works by uh, setting the uh, Z rotation using transform.euler angles. But you do have to use uh, like a new vector free. You can't just like say transform.euler angles.z equals zval. You have to use, set it as a new vector free for some reason. Whatever. Uh, we use the camera, use the left shift thing to allow the player to look ahead which basically just uses the screen to world point to get the mouse position, then gets the direction of the, the camera to the mouse position, then moves that at a rate of two times time, dot delta time. You can just set that to whatever you want, really. You could probably put it as a public variable and have, like, change the effect or something. I don't know. Yeah, cool. And we just made some small changes to the player movement script to allow for better movement checking, so it wouldn't stop the player moving, which was a bug I found. And yeah, uh, if you've got any questions, leave a comment, and I will answer them the best I can. And as always, play my new game, Loud or Quiet, which is like a, there's a demo-y, not really a demo, it's like a preview slice of the game that's out now on HEO, which there's a link, there's a link in the description. And yeah. That's it, so like, comment, subscribe, all that shit, and I will see you in the next tutorial where we... Oof, I have my thing here. We're doing weapon pickups in the next tutorial. So, bye!